Hello everyone and I am Odurole Mojibola and you're welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching us how I created this mystery braid ankle sander. And um, if you're watching my channel for the first time, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can always be updated each time I upload a video. Now let's go right into our mystery braid ankle sander. Sit back and I'm going to be right back. So today we are going to be starting with all of this pattern. I know the first thing somebody is saying is, oh, you have started again with this, your pattern thing without showing us how you got it. Now, I need you to know that the, I have already taught us how to create this particular back pattern for children. I have also taught us how to create this mystery braid. So what I'm doing now is just teaching us how to go about lasting it. And I want you to understand that if you're just watching my channel for the first time i need you to subscribe just click the subscribe button and then the notification bell so that each time i upload a video you will be notified so i'm going to ensure that the link to those videos i will put them in the description i will also put them at the end of this video you can just click the screen and then go ahead and watch them all of this i have taught even how to place on let how to line it i have already taught that so i'm sure if you are you are you have been my student you will not like me doing that all over and all over again so sit back with me let's continue with this now that i have this all i need to do is just to trim this out trim all of them out just this and this then we'll go straight into how to last it's very important so many people are having challenges when it comes to lasting their footwear and that's why i'm going to be taking my time to explain all of this to us today so now that i've already trimmed them all out i'm going to go ahead to my insole now my insole is made of an ever foam we also call it a mark mark we also call it mako in nigeria i'm making use of mako 3 that's my insole and i'm having my synthetic leather on top of this i just stitch it down i use my contact at to bind them together and stitch so that's what i'm going to be using for my insole please i've already thought this too i've thought a lot in this in this particular channel and i need really need you to do some catch up if you are just watching me for the first time now let's quickly go into how to last now i always teach us to use our fingers because i find out that your finger is always available and available so this time around for this particular design i'm going to be using this part of my finger this side of my finger that's what i'm going to be using i'm going to trace it down then create a kind of um just a signature on that side to know where to place to open that is for here now for this other side i am going to use directly under my nail or directly under this so i'm going to be using this now i want you to know that if you decide to also use the same thing you will find out that if you place a child's leg on this you find out that it will perfectly the design will perfectly cover at least it cover part of the big toe and then cover fully the smallest toe which is the reason for this positioning so i assume that my 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 fingers represent the, ch the child's leg and then on this side it will cover the big toe around here you understand what i mean to cover their big toe you know till this part why for their smallest toe it will cover their smallest toe and then it will start from this under directly under this side of their smallest toe so it will not be coming out when their smallest toe won't be coming out i like to always reiterate and talk about this always so i'm just going to place my mystery braid this is actually a mystery braid in case you want to search for it without watching till the end it's called mystery braid so that's what i use for this particular front design so i'm going to punch this side then i'm going to use the width now i'm trying to place it and fold it together please don't just open it up like this before you actually create your opening or else you'll find out that it will be too wide so make sure you fix it together a little bit before you finally position it and or place it where you want it to be so i need us to see that's why i'm trying to adjust the camera so let's quickly so this is the initial point we're going to try to cover it up then i'm going to come downward 
and go in a little bit. Don't forget, I told us anytime you are punching, make sure that from ear to ear is about one centimeter so that by the time you open it up, you won't be having issues trying to, you know, not allow this side to open up to the other side. So it should not be too close. What I did was I stitched my insole about 0 0.5 centimeter from the edge so so from 0 0.5 away to i have my one centimeter so from here to here i have my one from here to here i also have my one so i hope that is clear so we're gonna do the same thing on this other side place it whatever kind of um upper you want to use this is called an upper if you have been following my channel i'm sure you must have learned a lot of names so this is where we had initially this is our initial point. We are going to place it again. I told us to fix it together so that it will not open too much. So I am going to just take in my hand a little bit and then punch. So I'm going to go ahead and use my punch plier. Please, if you cannot afford to get a punch plier for a start, please get the other punch. So you can get something like this to to punch and i want you to know that i always say the reason why i'm punching is because by the time i open it i don't want my my insole to begin to tear off because by the time you don't punch to seal the the ends it will just continue to open now it's not compulsory you buy a round punch like this there are oblong punch i will try to actually get that and show us that you can also use it doesn't have a round shape it has the shape of you know like a straight um, form like this that you can use to open this up i'll work on that and then um, show us in my next video by god's grace so i'm just going to go ahead and use my punch as usual so use the punch so that is what i have i'm going to use my utility knife i'm going to use my utility knife to open it up so you have to open gently make sure that you open from here then come to this other side and join the previous one that's very very important so i'm going to come right here and do the same thing so I'm going to just go ahead and insert this. Let me try to use this to pull it in. Now you will find out that I didn't open twice like I used to do. It's because of this thickness. It's not quite thick. So it's not very thick. That's why I had to leave it that way without cutting through twice. I mean cutting this. You can find that I cut once. Sometimes depending on the thickness of my upper, I cut twice. As in, I open it to be about two millimeter wide. So this, you can find out that you are not really seeing anything apart from the fact that there is a mark there. So that's just that. Let me just put it in. So you can see what I have. I just used my last two arrange it properly you can see what i have so we are going to go to the back i'm sure you can see that my last is not exactly the same size yes i have found out that so many of the last that um, we use here in nigeria does not perfectly fit and i want to believe that some of us have such issues as well now for this size 25 i'm going to be using it to create this size 28 you understand because if you are if you are actually working on a boy's sander you might have to use the same size all those last you know fit boys than girls for the ones i have worked with please i don't know of the one you bought but the ones i have bought i find out that when i want to work like what i have here if i use this for somebody a girl that wears 25 except the child has a very wide fit it will be too big so that's the reason I'm using it for this particular one. Now you'll be wondering, okay, how do you fix the back with this? I'm just going to adjust it backward to fix the back. So I'm going to adjust it this way for the back part. Now for the back design, I'm going to be placing it this way. I'm going to be placing it on it right here according to the design is right at the back. I'm going to use my pen to position it. Now you can do all of this on your pattern. Immediately you are through with creating your pattern, do the same thing. I'm going to create an opening right here. 
so you can see what i have i'm just going to go ahead and then um, punch and then open it up so now i've opened i'm just going to place this way i'm going to place it to go this way this seems not to open properly now i'm using a seam ripper to actually open it properly so insert into it this way then it's going to come out from here backwards then i'll have my back pattern my back pattern is ready so i'm just going to do this place it here i'm still going to tell us the measurements for this particular back pattern it's actually went in this way you can see how it went in and our ankle strap is red now you will find out that the way i position the strap you can see that the buckle is here so it's not going to be for this particular leg now this is what i mean by the time i want to position the next one i am going to make it you can see that this one this side does not have buckle when i want to position this one i'm going to make the strap go this way so that i can have left and right i hope you understand that when you wear like this this one is actually for the right leg because your strap has to go behind this is going to now be for the left leg because by the time you buckle you buckle it it will come this way so i hope you get what i mean so like i said you can see i've opened up this side i'm going to i measured from this side to where i started here i measured 3.5 centimeter that's what i measured so you can work on yours too you can work on yours too i measure 3.5 i don't know if you can see it it starts from here to this side 3.5 you understand so just measure 3.5 for this particular size that's quite okay if you are working with a smaller size you can use 2.5 centimeter but for this size 29 28 i think that's perfectly okay so you can then go ahead and put in your back pattern and before you know it you are true actually this particular style is a very simple one and a trendy one the fact that it has a mystery braid is what makes it you know unique and somebody will be like oh how did they achieve that look how did they do that and before you know it you have already been able to you know make your customer proud that you were able to produce it for them so you can see what i have the next thing is now i told us before now about sizes now this is 29 last by the time i put i will have to push it forward so you can see that I'm having it full, full, full air. But if I'm not careful with the front, it will end up being too big for the child. So I will make sure that you can ensure that it's tight when you are working on girls' standard. But for if you are working on boys' standard, you can just use perfectly this size. You can see what I have. So most girls don't have this kind of a big leg, except for few who has a wide fit. So that is that on that. I think what we need to do is just go ahead and last it now then i will show us how i'm going to finally bottom it and you know the old tutorial is over don't forget if you are watching my channel for the first time ensure that you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will not miss anything at any point in time every of my videos are worth your time i'm telling you and then i always i promise to always make sure that the package is full of information that we can learn from so let me quickly go ahead last this and show us how i'm going to finally bottom it so now i've already applied my adhesive you see the same evosti gum so I'm just going to go ahead and then um, last. Now you have to be careful when you are placing it. I will suggest you hold your sew this way and guide. Let your hand be guiding it this way. Place gently. Place gently.
see what it looks like now. I'm just going to try to armor it down. Armor it then. I'll finish all of the edges so that it can be very smooth and beautiful. You can see that to a large extent, I've been able to achieve, you know, moderation. So it means if you cut your insole perfectly and your sole perfectly, you can align them like this without having to grind the edges. So all this gum that you're noticing, you will just use your dye, your leather dye for the edges just to cover it up and then... Um, you are good to go and your sander is ready. Yes, now you can see what my final product looks like. Don't forget to finish your edges properly for a neat job. You don't have to go through this route for your insole. You can decide to wrap yours and you can decide to use an ordinary strap. Ensure you check out the videos that I kept on the screen so that you know how I created the mystery braid and how you can cut this your back pattern. Thank you for being part of today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell so that each time I upload a video you will be notified. Thank you so much for being part of today's class. See you next time. Bye.